I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on numbers. Here is a test paper on real numbers. It is kind of important to go through this test paper in which we have 10 questions so that we get our basics right. This video should be very good for all the high school students who really want to understand basics of mathematics and move forward without any problems. So we'll have 10 questions here. Some of them may have multiple parts. So this video can be about half an hour long. Let's go through these questions one by one. Question number one A is provide example of irrational numbers. Well, what are irrational numbers? The examples are pi is an irrational number. You cannot get the exact value of pi, right? For example, the other irrational numbers could be, for example, square root of two. So if you type square root of 2 and try to find the value, you will get some decimal value which is not terminating. For example, if I press square root of 2, what do I get as a decimal equivalent? I get 1.4142135, something like this, which does not have a pattern. Do you see that? Similarly, if I press pi and find its value, the value for pi in decimals is also a value which is not terminating. So likewise, we have so many numbers which have non-terminating decimals, right? So most of the square roots which cannot be written as integers and uh, many other numbers will be within the category of irrational numbers. Question number 1b is explain why minus square root of 121 is not an irrational number. Well, you do see square root sign there. However, 121 square root is 11. So as you know, square root of 121 is basically equal to 11. Negative, so let me put negative here. It is a simple integer. It is something which is exactly known. So therefore, this is not irrational. It is a rational number, right? So if you see a square root sign, you have to think whether it has a value which is integer value or not. Or is it like square root 2 or square root 3? Only then you should be answering those kinds of questions. I hope that helps. Question number 1c is, all irrational numbers are real numbers, true or false? Well, real numbers include rational and irrational numbers. So this statement is true. Correct. So real numbers is the bigger set which includes natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational and irrational numbers. Right? Question number 1D is how can you represent square root 2 on a number line? Well, purpose of giving this question here is that we say what are real numbers? So we know real numbers can be represented or can be placed on a number line, right? So how do you put square root 2 on a number line? Right? That's the whole idea. Well, here is a neat way of doing it. So let's say if I have this point and my origin is right there, so what I do here is do a small bit of construction. If this is one unit, right, and if I drop a perpendicular whose length is also one unit, in that case, the diagonal will be square root of 2, right? That is how we get square root of 2. Now, clearly, the square root of 2 can be plotted on this number line. So, we could just go down like this, and we know this is square root of 2. So, we have this length equivalent to square root of 2 does make sense to you. So that is how we get our irrational number square root of 2 on the number line. Does make sense to you? So that is a neat way of placing square root 2 on number line. This could be done with square root 3, square root 5 and all of the numbers. Perfect. So as an exercise, you can make an attempt to plot square root 3 and square root 5 on this number line. Perfect. 
So let's move on to question number two, where we'll do evaluation or estimate some values. The very first one is simple integers minus 9 plus minus 2 minus minus 4. Important thing is, when you open the bracket, plus and minus becomes negative, right? And minus and minus becomes positive. Now, more negative means minus 11, right? Plus 4. Correct. When it is negatives and positives, the order says they go from left to right. So, minus 11 plus 4, more negative is your answer 11 and 7 if you do the difference it is 7 so we get minus 7 as our answer in part b minus 2 q minus minus 3 square this kind of important to understand that cube of a negative number is negative and 2 q is 8 so this gives you minus 8 here we have a negative sign here and now let's look into this bracket carefully it is minus 3 square and then bracket do you understand so this negative is not squared, only 3 is squared, so we have minus 9 here. So when you open this bracket, you get minus 8 plus 9, and the answer will be plus 1. This is kind of important, right? There's a catch here. This 2 is not outside the bracket, but on 3 alone. It is not squaring the negative part. Now here we are looking into the fourth root and the third root. Fourth root of 64 is 4. 4 times 4, uh, sorry, uh, fourth root will be what? Square root is uh, 8. So let me just redo it. So 2 to the power of 6 is this, right? So let's do it. It is to the power of 1 by 4. So square root is 8. Let me go ahead in steps. So it is square root of 8 minus. Here we are talking about cube root of 8. Now cube root of 8 is 2. The square root of 8 is 2 times 4, right? So it is square root of 2 times 4 minus 2. So that is actually equals to 2 square root 2 minus 2, correct? So that is how we are going to solve it. You could also write square 64 as 2 to the power of uh, 5, right? 6 rather, right? 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So we can write it like this, 2 to the power of 5, and then we have 2 to the power of 1 over 4, minus, this is 2 to the power of 3 is 8 to the power of 1 over 3. And then also, you can get your result, right? Anyway, that is your solution. Now the next question here is to evaluate square root of 169, which is 13, minus absolute value of 5 minus 8 which is minus 3 absolute value cube root of 27 is 3 so this gives you 13 absolute value of 3 will be positive 3 right so we'll have positive 3 plus 3 now negative 3 positive 3 is 0 so we get this as 13 as our answer so be careful that you should not jump on steps absolute value of 5 minus 8 is going to be positive 3 not negative 3 right so this negative sign remains perfect now we have square root of square root of square root of 4096 right now uh, let me share with you that 4096 can be written as 2 to the power of 12 right so 2 to the power of 12 is 4096 so we have this First, we have power of half, and then again, we have power of half, and then again, we have power of half, okay? So, I could write this as 2 to the power of 12, right, divided by, so these are 2 times 2, 4, 4 times 2, 8, right? So, that is what we get, right? So which could be simplified, dividing both by 4 as 2 to the power of uh, 3 over 2. Correct? 4 times 3, 4 times 2. That means 1 whole and 1 square root. That means 2 square root 2. Correct? So the value of 4096 square root over that square root and over the square root is 2 square root 2. Is that clear to you? It's a very important question from test point of view. Now let's look into question number 2b. 
we have no radicals and in this exercise we'll work a lot about these radicals write the following in the simplest form 5 square root 7 2 square root 11 3 so what we do here is that we combine the like terms correct so you can combine these like terms and then write down your result so we have 5 square root 7 minus square root 7 let's do it in steps right so we have this as minus square root 7 and then we have plus 2 square root 11 minus 3 square root 11 combining the like terms 5 minus 1 is 4 so we get 4 square root 7 and here we get 2 minus 3 as minus 1 no need to write 1 there minus square root 11 so that becomes our result when we are multiplying these square roots they all get multiplied right so so what we get here is equal to 12 times 8 times 9 correct that's what we get now you could actually multiply then find the square root the other way is um, we could actually take away 9 is like 3 times 3 right and 12 is 4 times 3 so so let's write down 9 outside as 3 correct and then we'll write 12 as 4 times 3 and 8 as 4 times 2 right so when you write like this you observe that 4 can be taken out right so and what remains inside is 3 times 2 which is 6 so when you take out 4 that means you get 3 times 4 within square root you get 3 times 2 right so the answer here should be 12 square root of 6 so that is your result the next question here is square root of 50 plus 3 square root 18 plus 10 square root 2 when you look at it nothing seems to be common well 50 can be written as 2 times 25 plus 3 times 18 can be written as 2 times 9 so this decimal is not decimal it is multiplication and here we have minus 10 square root 2 square root of 25 is 5 so give 5 square root 2 plus square root of 9 is 3 so 3 times 3 is 9 square root 2 minus 10 square root 2 and now all of them have square root 2 so we can combine these are the like terms so 5 plus 9 is 14 minus 10 is 4 so we get 4 square root 2 as our answer next question here we need to apply the distributive property 5 square root 3 gets multiplied with 2 and 3 square root 6 so what we get here is 5 square root 3 times 2 plus 5 square root 3 times 3 square root 6 when you multiply 2 gets multiplied with 5 you get 10 square root 3 here 5 and 3 get multiplied you get 15 and within the bracket you get 3 times 6 which is 18 18 can be written as 9 times 2 as we did earlier so we could write this as 10 square root 3 plus 15 times 9 times 2 right so 9 is 3 we'll take that 3 out so we get 10 square root 3 plus 15 times 3 is 45 square root 2 so that becomes your answer right how did we get 45 9 square root is 3 multiplying 3 with 15 right so so what we did here was we wrote this as okay so let me add one more step here so we wrote this as 10 square root 3 plus 15 times 3 right square root 2 and then got their answer is that clear to you so i hope it is absolutely clear so far let's move on and take question number three you can pause the video answer this question and then look into my suggestions question number three a express as mixed radicals in the simplest form when we say mixed radicals that means something outside something inside the radical sign right so what we have here is 4 square root of 48 now 48 can be written as a perfect square 16 times 3 right so 16 is 4 square so we can write this as 4 times 4 square root of 3 which is 16 square root of 3 right so that is a mixed radical in the lowest form 3b is express the entire radical 
as entire radical. So everything has one radical, right? So we are doing the reverse of what we did earlier. So now it is 2 over 3 square root 21. When that goes inside, so it will be 2 square and 3 square. That is 4 over 9 times 21 will be within the square root. You get an idea, right? Now, these have 3 common, right? So 3 and 7. So in this case, we could simplify and write this as 7 times 4 as 28 over 3 square root, right? So as one radical sign. Is that clear to you? Question 3 C is to evaluate 6 over square root 2 plus minus square root of 18. Now, we could rationalize this. 6 over square root 2, multiply and divide by square root 2, correct? And we do plus and minus square root of 18. So when you do this, you get 6 square root 2, oh sorry, you get 6 square root 2 in the numerator and the denominator is square root 2 times square root 2 is 2, right? Here we have plus and minus. 18 can be written as 9 times 2 or 3 square root 2. Perfect. So that gives you 3 square root 2 plus and minus 3 square root 2. So when you do that, what do you get? Well, we have two options now. One is to add and one is to subtract. So when you add them up, you get 6 square root 2. And when you subtract, you get 0. So we get two answers of this, which is 6 square root 2 and we get 0, right? So these are the two solutions. Remember, we have plus and minus here, right? So don't miss that. Question number 4. Calculate the length of the body diagonal of rectangular prism with length, width and height as 3, 4 and 12 respectively. So what we're trying to say here is something like this. Let's make a box here. Right, so, um, okay, so this is not to the scale, but just to give you an idea. So let's say we have a box which is like this, correct? So what we are saying here is that it says length of 3, this is 4 and that is 12. We need to find the body diagonal. So when we say body diagonal, we mean from here to here, right? So, so that is the diagonal which we want to figure out. The way to do it is kind of like this. So, so in, the, in the horizontal plane, we can actually first find the diagonal, this diagonal. Do you see that part? So first we can calculate this diagonal. And then we'll calculate the body diagonal. So now let's label this as A, B, C, D, E, F, N, G, and H. Is it okay? So in that case, A to C is what? So we're using Pythagorean theorem, AC squared should be equals to AB squared plus BC squared, which is 3 squared plus 4 squared. Correct? So that is AC squared. So AC will be square root of 9 plus 16, which is square root of 25 or is equal to 5. So we know this is 5 for us. Now, we can find what AD is. Perfect. So, so, we can apply this Pythagorean theorem twice. So, AD square now, for us, will be AC square plus CD square. Or AD will be square root of AC square is 5 square plus 12 square. Correct? Which is 25 plus 144 square root which is equal to square root of 169 or we get 13 units, right? So this length is 13 units and that is how you can easily find it. So I hope that is clear, right? Let's move on and take question number five. Calculate the area of the given triangle with height of four units. So this is the height. So let me draw like this as shown. Well, area of the triangle is half base into height, right? So, area is half of base 
times height. So we need to find uh, this remaining part of the base. Now since this is 90 degrees, let's label this also. We have A, B, C and D. So A, now B to D we need to find. So B, D square will be what? It is the shorter side. So it is going to be A, B square minus A, D square. So that is AB square is 11 square minus 4 square, correct? So that is your BD square. So it is BD will be equal to square root of 121 minus 16, correct? So, so that is what we have as BD, which is square root of 11 take away 6 is 5. And uh, then again, 11, then we have 1, 105. So we get square root of 105 as b to d. Okay, so let me write this as square root of 10, 105. Okay, so it is slightly more than 10. 10 is 100, correct? Okay, so the area is how much? So we may need a calculator, but the whole exercise is without calculator, correct? So what we could do here is, or we can estimate this to, let's say 10.2. Okay, so because 10 square is 100, right, and 11 is 121, it's very far away, so we'll assume this to be 10.2. Okay, so in that case, area will be equals to half of base, which is 105 square root plus 6.5, that is the base, times height, which is 4, right? So multiplying this by rather dividing we get 2 here so the answer is 2 times square root of 105 plus 6.5 correct so we are estimating this as 10.2 right so I'm just taking a general value so I do this as 10.2 plus 6.5 so we get this as 2 times uh, 0 0.7 16.7 correct so when you multiply by 2 you get 7 times 2 is 14 1 and this is 33 then, right? Unit square. So that is how you could actually estimate the answer. Perfect. Question number six. Well, this could be slightly complicated. I'd like you to pause the video, work it out, and then look into my solution. Question number six is, if x is equal to minus half, y is minus two over three, we need to evaluate. 3 times x times x plus 2xy minus over x minus y, right? So let's write down the expression. We have 3 times x times x plus 2xy over x minus y, correct? Let's substitute the values. We get 3 times x times x, which is minus half times minus half plus 2 times minus half times y is also minus value, right? Okay. And the denominator, we have minus half minus of minus 2 over 3, correct? So we have substituted the given values of x and y. Now, you notice that minus and minus becomes positive. 3 is in the numerator, so we get 3 over 4 positive. In this case, plus and pl minus minus again positive. Two negatives makes it positive. This 2 gets cancelled with the other 2, so we get 2 over 3 here. As far as the denominator is concerned, we get negative half plus 2 over 3, right? So I'm combining these two. And now, we'll take it on the right side and do the needful. So the numerator here is 4 and 3. We'll take common denominator of 12. Multiply this 3 with 3, we get 9. Plus 4 times 2 is 8. Everything divided by... So here the common denominator is 6, 3 minus, and we have plus 4, correct? So that gives you 9 plus 8 is 17 out of 12 times. We can take this on the numerator, and 4 minus 3 is 1, correct? Now you could simplify dividing this by 2. So you get 17 over 2, right? Half of 17, which is 8.5. So that becomes your answer. Perfect.
The next question here is question number seven. Find area of triangle with square root 6 cm base and square root 10 over 2 cm height, right? So area will be how much? Area will be half of base, which is square root 6 times height, which is square root of 10 over 2, right? So that gives us square root of 60 over 2 times 2 is 4, correct? So that becomes the, the answer. Now square root of 60 you could write this as uh, 4 times, you know, uh, we could write this as 4 times, uh, 4 times 1, 12, right? So, okay, so 4 times 4, which is 12, times 5. Right? Let me write it like this, over 4, correct? So 4 times 4 is 16, 16 times 5 is 60. So what we get here is 4 over 4 square root of 5, and that gives you a square root of 5 centimeters square, correct? So that is how you could kind of simplify it and then write down your answer. Perfect. So that is how you could solve it. Uh, we did a mistake here. It is uh, 4 times 3, sorry. 4 times 3 is 12. 12 times 5, right? So, uh, so, so there is a mistake here. Let me correct this. So, 4 can be taken out. So, we get 2 square root of 15 over 4, correct? So, that gives you half of square root of 15 centimeters square, correct? That makes sense. So that should be the answer. Okay. You could see it otherwise also. 6 can be written as 2 times 3, right? And 10 can be written as 2 times 5. So everything is within the square root. And we are dividing this by 4, correct? You can take 2 outside. So we get 5 times 3, 15. So half of 15 square root is the answer, correct? Okay. So sorry for that. It was 3 times 4, not 4 times 4, right? Question number 18. Find the dimensions of the largest square piece that would fit into a round piece with diameter of 5 square root 2. Okay, so basically what we're looking at is something like this. We have a square and in this we want to fit a, I mean, we have a circle in which we need to fit a square and we are given the, the diameter. Okay. So this diameter is 5 square root 2. So find the dimensions of the larger square. That means both sides are equal. We need to find these sides. So that's the question for you. I hope that is clear, right? So let us say these sides are A. In that case, A square plus A square is square of 5 square root 2. So we have 2A square equals to 5 square square is 25 times 2 which is 50. So a square will be 50 divided by 2 which is 25. So that gives you the value of a as square root of 25 which is 5 units. So, so the dimensions will be 5 by 5. Right? So that is how we should get this solution. We are almost at the end now. Two more questions to go. The question here is, two boats leave a port at the same time. A heads east at the speed of 12 kilometers per hour. B travels south. So let's make a diagram here to represent the situation. So it says, A heads east with a speed of 12 kilometers per hour. So let's say this. And B travels south with the speed of 10, slightly less. How far apart will the shifts be after four hours? So we need to find the, the distance between these two boats, right? So here is A 
and here is B. So after four hours, how far will A be? Well, the formula is distance is speed into time, correct? We know that distance is speed into time. So distance for A, so let's say this is 0, this is A n. So O to A will basically be 4 times the speed of A, which is 12 kilometers per hour, right? So 4 times 12, which is 48. As far as O to B is concerned, it will be 4 times 10, which is 40, right? So both are in kilometers. So the diagonal A to B is the distance between them will be square root of 40 square plus 48 square, correct? So, so that is how we could actually find the values. Now, to simplify this, what we could do is we could take some things common, right? That, that always helps. So as far as 40 and 48 are concerned, we can say uh, 4 squared 16, because both are getting multiplied by 4, right? Uh, 8, 8 is common, right? So in 40, we can say, we can write this as 8 squared 64. Both can see. 8 times 5 is 40. Do you see that? That is what we have. And here, 8 times 6 this is uh, multiplication, okay, whole square, just for easy calculation, since calculator is not allowed, right? So 8 square is common, so I can take 8 outside. We are left with 5 square plus 6 square, which is 25 plus 36. So we have 8 square root of, add them up, 6 and 5, 11, 1. So we get uh, 3, 2, 5 and 1, 6, 61. So 8 square root 61 becomes the, the answer, right? So provide the exact answer. So we have the answer as distance will be 8 square root 61 kilometers. Is that clear to you, right? So, so this is a tricky part. So 40 square and 48 square. So 40 has been taken as 8 times 5 and this is 8 times 6. So what we get here is basically... 8 square times 5 square plus 8 square times 6 square. Do you see that part? Right? So that is why we took 8 square common as 8. We are left with 5 square which is 25, 6 square which is 36. Add them up and get your result. Perfect. So when you are working without calculator, you may have to rearrange the numbers. Now here is the last question for you express the following decimals in the form of p over q. So here we have a terminating decimal, non-terminating de decimal. Let's learn the technique of writing decimal numbers into rational numbers. So we have uh, x equals to 1.465, correct? So that means we could multiply this by 1000 because there are three decimal places and also divide by 1000, correct? So we get 1465 over 1000. Now, we could divide both by 5 to simplify, right? So 5 times 2, we get 200 here. 5 times 2 is 10, 46, 5 times 9, and then 3. So we get 293 over 200. So that becomes our answer. So we, we could write this as 293 over 200. As far as the other one is concerned, which is repeating decimals, we adopt a different strategy. So we again write x equals to 1.0343, right? So what we notice here is 3434 4, 4 is recurring, but uh, so what we'll do here is we'll first multiply by 10, so we get 10.3434, 3, the recurring part. And now we'll multiply this by 100, that means we get 1000, right? We are multiplying this by 100. We get 1,000 as 1034.34 recurring, I mean. Do you understand? Okay. So the decimal parts can now be cancelled. So taking away 10 from 1,000, right? So we get 990x equals 2. And when you take away 10 from 34, 
you get 1024, right? So x will be equal to 1024 divided by 990, correct? So 1000 take away 10 is in the denominator. Now these terms have something in common, right? They can be reduced. So we can divide this by 2. So dividing by 2, we get 512 here. And uh, dividing by 2, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 9 is 18. That is what we get. So, so we could get our answer here as 512 over 495. So note, let me make a correction here. Note, recurring or repeating decimals. are rational numbers. Since you can write them in the form of P by Q, do you see that? That is the exercise. So both are rational numbers. If it is non-repeating decimal, then it is irrational, right? So it's kind of very important to understand. So I hope with this, you understand the basic concepts. Feel free to write your comment, share your views, share your questions. If you like and subscribe to my videos, that will be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.